We've got another new HPE ProLiant system in the lab today. This is the DL560 Gen 11, and there's some pretty neat things in this system that we're gonna check out in just a moment. We've recently seen their 2U sort of mainstream DL320 and their updated tower solution. Now for this, this is entirely different. A quad CPU Intel system with an internal liquid loop with radiator. So we're really excited to tear this open and see what that looks like inside. So this is the first quad CPU 2U server we've seen in the lab in quite some time. So we're excited to see that. We're excited for the liquid loop. The other key feature of this server is RAM density. This thing supports up to 16 terabytes of DDR5 in this one 2U box. So let's crank it open. Let's crank it open. So let's crack it open, take a look at the hardware inside. I'll bring in Kevin and we can nerd out on all the intricacies of the loop, the CPUs, the DRAM and everything else. All right, so I've got this unboxed and Kevin joins me now. And if you notice a mild continuity problem with my different shirt, it's because we got distracted once we got this on the operating table and had to go. Uh, uh, you said something, I heard you yelling. Something lit on fire. Something I smelled like, and it would smell like coconut oil. We're gonna light it on fire. Yeah. I don't know, things so, happen. So anyway, we dealt with a problem, but here we are. We've got the system out. Uh, what, what stands out to you before we pop the lid? Uh, I mean, it looks identical to a lot of the other uh, HP platforms we've had in. A little and heavier, to be from honest. From the outside, it looks like a normal 2U system. Uh, it does have po four uh, power supply support back here and uh, a bunch of PCIe risers. Yeah, on the front we have uh, one bank of drives. Uh, this is the uh, 8 NVMe uh, backplane, although this is... So we'll dive into it a little bit on the inside, but uh, this NVMe backplane is set up to use one of the RAID cards. Okay. So I'll rip the lid and I'm sure you're immediately drawn to the liquid loop. I'm immediately drawn to this. There's a little HPE rectangle branding on the radiator. I I've never seen any the little bits. I know, I've never seen anything like that inside a server. Normally the branding people don't care about uh, logos on the inside. And I wonder why the radiator of all things. There's probably enough money in this liquid loop that they're like, hey, we have to put a logo on to justify the expense. Some design guy that was making this in his uh, CAD application was like, ah, it was just the, 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 the brand on there. All right, so we've got the radiator up front, which is really cool. And of course we can see the, uh, the liquid loop plates on the CPUs and some of the tubing there. Um, yeah, overall it's a pretty unique layout. So. We have, um, well, and because this is a uh, uh, quad CPU layout, this is mirrored on the bottom side. And so because I have this preferred angle to the side, I can see it's two radiators. You can't really tell it from uh, the up No, it uh, looks like angle, one piece from here. But it's two short radiators, about an inch tall, stacked uh, one on top of one another. And it looks like the way to service this is you would undo and open, you start opening up this uh, shelf, remove this little bracket here, and then the radiator and liquid loop for the uh, two top CPUs can then come out as one unit. Right, so there's a little bit of nuance here that's worth talking about. This system can be sold with just two CPUs. And I think in most, if not all of those all configs- All CPU layouts were uh, air-cooled. So it's air-cooled only for the two CPUs. And actually, I looked at the manual, there's a different fan kit that goes in here. Still five fans, I think, but it's a dual rotor or something. I'm not a fan guy. I don't know, I guess they maybe go well, I think it also takes up all of the space. This one, you have a little bit of gap. Oh, there is a little bit of gap. You're right. Yeah. Uh, so there is a different fan kit. But when you get to the quad CPU systems, that's when they want to go to liquid cooling if you're over 270 TDP per processor. Yeah, somewhere on there, and they go up to like 350 right now. But there's a big difference where as soon as you start pushing a lot of thermal energy through it, you need a better way to capture that and move it off to the back. So that's all true. And as we know, in most servers, the little blue bits are the easy to hot swap or not hot swap, but they're easy to swap out and replace. And if this was an air cooled system, we'd be able to take this arm up and lift this tray out and access the, the CPUs and the, the dim slots underneath. Let me see if my Torx wrench is handy. Yeah. All right. Kevin's left the camera to go look for pieces to take things apart. But basically, because of the way this is built, you can't really easily pull these things out the way you might be used to. 
like uh, Kevin said, well, he's going to mess with it here. There's four screws here on this fan bank, and there's just a little more nuance in the uh, in the field serviceability. Not impossible, not all that difficult, but just does require a little more planning if you intend to take these things apart. And please yeah, don't drop a screw so, in there. I mean, it, it's a bit of a downside, but it's expected. You have a lot of the uh, a lot of these new systems where. In the past, it was like blue handles were toolless. Right. Now, it's, semi toolless. It's not a lot, but you still need to be able to. Uh, actually, it, those guys stay in place. And you may I've, have to unscrew the radiator, right? Because it's oh, got little clips. Yeah, yeah. All right, so Kevin will continue to play. Point being, though, is that with these closed liquid loops, just a little more planning is required to uh, to service those. As uh, oh, great, more pieces that are probably going to get lost. Don't oh. worry, they're coated blue, so I know that they came Normally from Normally we don't take things apart like this until after we review them, but oh gosh, you're making me nervous. Okay. But yes, so... It that, is two pieces, which I couldn't see from my side. Yeah, so it shows it's it's a very unique component, and I would say we could lift it up, but I don't really want to remove the, uh, ah. the PCI links for that tray. So the piece underneath it is equally as skinny down here? Yeah. All right. Oh, hey, there's a battery thing there, too, which I couldn't see either. Yes, I have the better preferred angle. Okay, so actually with that removed, then we could yank the tray and... Well, we uh, won't because there's a lot... Of, so to remove the tray... Well, we got to unplug all the risers. Yeah, and there's enough moving pieces here that I would prefer to test it before yes, we remove it. This is supposed everything. to be an unboxing, not a full dissection. I know you yeah. nerds are probably like, rip it out, rip it out, but uh, we're going to try to prevent ourselves from hurting ourselves and not and not destroy this thing. Someone at HP hurting us. Right, yeah, well, someone at HP will hurt us. The one thing I can see, though, is on the back of this uh, uh, Bank of NVMe bay is we don't have a lot of cabling. Yeah, so this, uh, as, I've as I mentioned when I looked at the front side, there's a number of back planes that uh, HP offers. So you can configure this thing with up to uh, 24 NVMe drives. Right. Uh, they're 2.5 inch. You can also go up to uh, 24 uh, EDSFF. Um, E3S? E3S. I thought it was 16 on the book. No, it's thir uh, it's uh, 24. Okay. The um, the part that is a little bit unique on this back plane, though, this guy's set up for interfacing with the RAID card. And right, which is right in here in Riser 1. Yeah, so this RAID card can support Where's going zero? to uh, two banks of uh, SSDs, and you have uh, 16 lanes total of um, PCI bandwidth to go between the RAID card and the uh, different back planes. In this case, you have one connection or eight lanes for um, these eight drives going to the RAID card. And the way um, uh, HP sets this up, you get one lane for each NVMe drive. So not a ton of bandwidth, but when for, you're talking for about- For this one, but to be fair, there's, uh, I mean, the manual's 295 pages long, yeah, they and offer, there's a lot of different storage configs. Yeah, they offer a tri-mode version of this, uh, this back plane that if you don't go with the RAID card, uh, you get full 5 4 uh, lanes for each individual SSD on it, and those are direct attached on the motherboard. Which you can see, even on the top shelf, we have uh, six lane or six PCI connections, four lanes each for uh, uh, additional NVMe traffic. Now, the back guys are for another uh, device in the back, but you have a lot of untapped resources that it just depends on the uh, final configuration of the system. Speaking of untapped, we said this supports 16 terabytes of RAM. We didn't get shipped with 16 terabytes of RAM, but no, importantly, the, we did get just... shipped with all the blanks, so that helps with uh, airflow in this system. Yeah, the, a lot of people don't realize these, but blanks make a huge difference on airflow through uh, the chassis. And, and uh, cooling the bits of DRAM that you have in there. Well, yeah, in a lot of cases, you, if you had just an open cavity, you'd have a lot of volume going through that spot and it'd be reduced in the airflow to the other components. Which is actually interesting in this server, typically in a normal 2U, 2PROC server, this cavity would have a big plastic shield on it, right? To direct airflow. They don't yeah. really have that, well, they don't have it at all in this design. Obviously isn't needed, uh, I suppose, with the liquid on the CPUs and the rest of the airflow really to cool the radiators and then the other components in the system. All right, so we've talked a lot about the, the core body of this system. In the back here, things get pretty interesting too. So let's start with the easy bits, the power supplies. We've got two. There's a, uh, a bank up here for two more, so you can get four in this system. And then Although these connectors are Yeah, easy. so there's an additional uh, power module that has to plug in to get, allow those uh, two additional 
upper power supplies to interface with the uh, motherboard. And I believe that comes into play when you start interfacing GPUs. Which is the next important part, and you're absolutely right. When we have more uh, GPUs drawing power, you'll want the additional power supplies. So these risers, here, yank this dude out, because this one's... This is oh, a very was, sad riser. Yeah, that's an empty one. But yes. I want to come back to that, because there's something else that's important about this riser. So, well, if it had, it would support three small form factor GPUs in here. Uh, and if it was the full riser, you could fit one double wide GPU in there, like a L40S, A100, H100, that sort of thing. Here we've got the second riser, which uh, also supports three more PCIe devices. In this case, we've got a RAID card and a... No, we don't have a NIC. The NIC's in the OCP slot. But we have the RAID cards. So we've got two open slots. Again, you could fit three small uh, GPUs, like an L4, or one double wide, again, L40S, A100, yeah. H100. And that's where the additional power comes into play here. But here's something that's kind of cool. Even with this blank, they've got the uh, the NVMe boot kit, which is the redundant drives. Yeah. They've got an adapter here where you can pull out one of these PCIe sleds and it, or uh, what the hell is this thing called? A blank? You can, you can pull out one of these PCIe blanks and mount the kit in here, put it in, hopefully this way, and then cable it up, which yeah. is a really kind of, I've never seen the boot drive NVMe kit in a PCIe slot before. Well, so I think that comes into play if you have uh, a version of this that might have 24 drives in the front, where you lose all the space in the front, it allows you to put it to the back. But they offer both front and rear yeah, mount. Yeah, so that's the rear mount. The other thing is you can front mount it. I think I saw in the picture, you've got the battery here, that there was a, a bay here, but you said there's also some blank space up in the front. Yeah, but our configuration doesn't have it, so I can't specifically pinpoint it. No, like we like to, we like right to dream about if we were to build these things uh, for review with no budget in mind, we would have had H100s in here, all the power supplies, the boot drives everywhere, and, and everything we could uh, get our hands on. But as it is, this is still a pretty robust build. We're super excited about the liquid loop, and actually I'm pretty curious to see what that looks like in ILO, and if we have time, uh, info site to just to understand the yeah. telemetry that comes off of it. What the heck is this? That looks like a, an M.2 yeah, so size, but there's that's some a USB. fantastic onboard boot options. You still get uh, USB, USB uh, three header? slots. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, USB three slots, and then I got distracted. We didn't even finish the story on the back. There's a blank here for another OCP slot. It's not cabled, so we'd have to. Yeah, HP on there designed to keep it flexible. Uh, these are the uh, PCI headers for the OCP slot. Uh, you can't really see it on this We've one. They're one of the past models. On you end up getting short bridges to attach uh, PCI lanes, but it does leave those lanes open for other options. All right, and it does have ILO for management, out of band stuff, so we'll uh, include some screen caps and that for the review. But for now, I mean, this thing looks really sweet. We're super excited. This is the first. Is this the first closed loop we've had in here? I know we've worked on it on site at a couple places. Technically, we looked at a Dynatron, but it wasn't yeah, a Yeah, it was a retrofit kit. So we did put a Dynatron retrofit kit, but this is the first that we've seen, and we've got more retros coming, so stay tuned for that. But this is the first we've seen in the lab with a full liquid loop internal to the system. We're really excited to play with this thing. Uh, we ought to put it back together. Hope that uh, Kevin can find the screws for the little tube cover there. Yeah. <laughs> get, get this thing all, all tidied up throw it in the rack and see what we can do with it. We'll be back with a full review on that system, but for now, thanks for tuning in for this uh, detailed unboxing of the DL560 Gen 11.